Hello YouTube friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life. Today I have six thrift store makeovers. I have told myself it's the new year, new fresh start, no more thrift shopping until I finish up the projects that I have already bought and I have in my shed. So this is some of the stuff that I've probably collected back in the summer, upcycling today, and they were a lot of fun. So let's get started. Today I'm working on some thrift store projects that I've had in my shed. I'm trying to clean it out. I've told myself I'm not buying any more until I finish up some of these projects. So this is on today's agenda. Hope you enjoy. I am going to put a nice graphic on this. I think I'm going to put a coffee graphic on it. This was, I think this might have been a teapot, but I have a really nice coffee graphic that I found on Design Space on Cricut that I'm going to use. Uh, it's really hard to do the Mod Podge transfer method or any sort of transfer method on a surface like this. It only works well for me anyways if it's chalk painted. And I wanted to keep the metal color, so that's why I'm going to use my Cricut. So we're going to cut it and get it ready to put on the pot. I'm going to clean my pot off with some rubbing alcohol and a little cloth. You want to make sure you have a really good clean surface before you put your graphics on. I've put some permanent vinyl on my mat and we're just going to cut it up and then I'll weed it, put some transfer tape on it and then put it on our little pot. We're ready to put the graphic on. A little tip when you're trying to put graphics on and it's something round that rolls around, I like to weed and use a lint roller. Put the lint roller up against your project and then it won't roll around and then you can take your graphic, it's a really cute coffee graphic, make sure it's centered and lay it down on your project. I think this turned out really cute and what an easy upcycle. I love the graphic and you can either leave the lid on or take the lid off and put a faux plant in it. Either way, it's really cute for a farmhouse kitchen. Next project is this vase. I picked it up for $4.99 at the thrift store and I think it might've been 50% off. Not liking the green. I am going to do my sand paint technique on this and I picked up which you always have to look for in our Home Depot, they have an oops section where they've mixed up the wrong paint. You can get fantastic um, deals there. And I really like, it's almost like a gray stone color. I'm gonna mix some of this up into some sand paint and paint my vase. If you've never made sand paint before, you need to try it out. It works fantastic. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can get the recipe there. But what a fantastic color in the oops section. Always, always check it out. I think it looks just like cement and it's gonna make this look like a real nice piece of stoneware. Um, I've cleaned it really well with some alcohol, wiped it all off, and now I'm gonna start painting. First coat's on and we've already got some texture being created. This will probably take three or four coats and I'm gonna let it completely dry in between each coat. And here's after the second coat, gonna let that dry and then put on the third coat and we'll see what it looks like, whether that will be the final coat or not. I'm now ready for my last coat and look at the texture that we've created so far. Now for my last coat, what I like to do, I like to, you always have to keep stirring this to bring the sand up and make sure it's mixed really well into the paint. But what I like to do with my last coat is I like to just dab it on and it just gives that little bit extra grainy texture on top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on this last coat. What a lucky find, finding that gray paint in the oops section at Home Depot. I think it turned this vase into an amazing upcycled piece. And I love the texture. Give this sand paint a try. Next project is this little glass vase. 
I fell in love with it. I actually, I have no idea what it was and it has a hole in the bottom, um, hole in the top, looks like a beehive, little things in it. It's really dirty, needs a really good cleaning. Picked it up for $3.99. I'm kind of wondering if it was something to catch bugs. If any of you know what this is, let me know down, down in the comments, but I have a wonderful idea on how to upcycle this. Okay, I've got it all cleaned up and ready to go. And I mixed up some baking powder paint. If you haven't tried this, I did a video not that long ago on how to make it, and it creates a fluffy, fantastic paint. That's what I'm going to use, and uh, I love this yellow color. Let's get painting. This might take two or three coats, and this paint does not have a long shelf life, so only mix up as much as you need for your project. Um, or it'll dry out on you. The first coat has dried and now I'm going back and I'm just patting the paint on for the second coat and it just kind of gives it that real kind of fluffy textured look. I think it kind of looks great. It makes this look more like a beehive. And that's the second coat on and see how fluffy it is. I love it. My beehive is completely dry and wow, talk about texture. I love it. And I'm gonna make a little hang tag for it. I've just got a piece of MDF board. I'm gonna paint it black and then I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on it and then I've got a really cute honey graphic that I'm gonna put on the top of it. So I'm gonna work away on that. My little tag has sat overnight. I've got my little dish of water. Just gonna wet it so you can start to see the graphics through. You wanna make sure when you're doing this technique, you don't put too much water on so you can see how the graphics are just starting to show through. And then rub it off and you have a graphic. So easy. My tag's all done and I think it's adorable. I took a yellow marker and I kind of colored in the bee a little bit to give it a little extra touch drilled a hole in the top, put some twine, and I'm gonna attach it to my painted beehive. The texture that this baking powder paint made was perfect for this project. And I love that graphic. I still have absolutely no idea what it is. So you guys, if anybody knows, you'll have to help me out down in the comments, but I love it. Next upcycle is this nice wooden shelf that I found. I like it that the pegs are at the top and what's also fabulous is the little pegs weren't glued in. So I can pull them all out and it makes it so much easier to paint this this board. I'm going to layer a couple colors on this using my candle wax technique and finish it off with some white chalk paint. This is just a pillar candle that I got at the dollar store. It works great for distressing wood. You just rub it along the wood wherever you think it would naturally kind of wear off. And when you paint it, wherever this wax is, the paint won't adhere to it. I guess I forgot to take the price tag off of this. I picked this up for $3.99 at Value Village. First color that I'm gonna put on is some of my homemade black chalk paint and I'm just gonna paint the whole board. I'm actually not gonna put the black paint intentionally along these grooves, because I think that would be nice to leave that kind of that wood color. I'm gonna put another coat of candle wax on top of the black that's all dry. And then I've got some green acrylic paint that I'm going to use. I think it'll be really nice to pop through when we're all finished. This is just actually Christmas green. And I'm just gonna put a light coat over the whole board. It doesn't matter if I have every little bit painted because we're gonna have this be really distressed looking. The green's all dry. Some more wax. You can never have enough wax when you wanna create distressed paint. I get really aggressive with it because I love the look of the distressed wood, but you don't need to. If um, you like just a little bit, then just use a little bit of the wax. Okay, 
Now we're going to put on our last coat and I've got some of my homemade white chalk paint and I'm going to put a good coat of that over the whole shelf. Okay, the white paint is completely dry. Now here's the trick when you're doing the wax technique. Take out your heat gun or your hair dryer and you're going to warm up all of that wax that's been layered on this paint and then we're going to take a scraper. This is just a razor scraper. You can use a regular scraper and we're going to scrape away at that wax and all those layers will show up. Okay, we've got it all scratched off and distressed and we've taken that plain stained board and made it look really old and vintage. And now I'm gonna put a graphic in the middle that just says welcome and then put the pegs back in. I've just printed off a simple welcome and I'm just gonna use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer to um, put it on the rack. And I think I'm gonna kind of center it so it looks nice with the pegs. So I'm gonna put it maybe right about here. This is sat overnight. It's completely dry. I've just got a little bit of water and a little sponge. I'm just gonna wet that until you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off all the paper. And then once all the paper's gone, we're gonna have a beautiful graphic on our coat rack. This technique takes a little bit of practice and just a little bit of patience, but once you get the hang of it, it works fantastic. These were done on regular computer paper on my laser jet printer. My graphic is all finished. It looks great. I really like it. I'm going to put a coat of the polyacrylic sealer over the whole coat rack. And then I'm just going to leave the pegs, just that natural wood color. I like, I like it uh, just natural. And I've got a little bit of wood glue. I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue in each little hole. And then stick the post in. And it'll stay really secure. Just like that. I took a plain wooden hanger and turned it into a chippy old looking piece and i love that i just kept the pegs just the wooden color i think that finishes it off nice next project i think this came off of a broken piece of a clock I tucked it away because I knew I could use this piece for something. Not loving the heart here. So I'm gonna take it out to my shed and I'm gonna cut it straight across here and get rid of this heart. And then I'll have a nice square to put a picture in the middle. So I took this out to my shed and I just drew a line across the bottom here and then cut off this heart. And now we're left with a way more modern looking frame than with this. But I'll still keep this. I'm going to tuck it away. You never know when you can use a cutoff heart for a project. I'm going to put a coat of my black homemade chalk paint over the whole frame. And then I'll put a little bit of candle wax on it. And then I'll cover it up with the uh, white chalk paint. I don't want this really distressed. So I'm just going to put a little bit of wax just along the edge and around the corners, because I just want that black just peeking out just a little bit. So that should be enough. And I had a piece of really thin wood and um, I just cut it out to size to fit on the inside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give everything a coat of my white chalk paint. It's completely dry. I just put a light coat of the white on top of it. And I'm just gonna take my sanding block and everywhere where there was wax, that paint is gonna sand off. And you can see how it was pretty aggressively put right there. So that took it right down to the wood. I really like that chip it, that chippy rustic wood look. I know it's not for everybody, but I really love it. So that's why a lot of my projects, I do this technique on them. 
I'm just going to sand in the middle here and then we'll be all ready to finish off the inside. We're going to do some iron-on decoupage and this was printed off on my inkjet printer. It's a picture from one of our camping adventures cooking a turkey over the campfire. Now you want to seal your ink when you've used an inkjet otherwise when you apply the Mod Podge on top or underneath your inks could smear. I just have some aerosol hairspray. You just want to give it a, a good coat, set it aside and let it dry and that will seal all of the ink into your pitcher. I'm gonna be using my Mod Podge mat and I'm gonna put a liberal amount over all of the wood and then we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put another coat on and then we're gonna iron on our photo. So that's a pretty good coat on that. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. We have two coats of the Mod Podge completely dry. I'm just gonna take my photo and center it exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper. You wanna make sure you're using parchment paper, not wax paper, and make sure everything's nice and smooth. And now I have my iron. I have it set on the highest setting with no steam. And you're just going to just very gently just iron on your photo. And this is fantastic for not having any bubbles or wrinkles and it works really well. And it just takes a little bit of pressure just to make sure that you've got your photo sealed right on. You can lift up your parchment paper and see how it looks and do it a little bit more if you think you need it. And we have and we have a perfect photo ironed on to that piece of wood to put in the frame. Now as a top coat, I don't like to use Mod Podge. I like to use a polyacrylic sealer. Make sure you're using a water-based one. If you're using an oil base, it will yellow on you. So I'm just gonna put a light coat over that and it'll seal it right up really nice. I think this turned out fantastic and it is exactly what I wanted. I have an adventure wall where I've done a whole bunch of pictures of all the adventures my husband and I have done and been on and this is going to be added to that wall. Next project is this mail and bill wall hanging. Uh, it looks like somebody's done maybe some toll painting and it's got a little tiny bit of a raised edge on it. I'm going to take it out to my shed and give it a really good sanding so it's nice and smooth and then bring it back in here and start painting. This is all painted. It took two coats of the spray paint and then I put a light coat of my homemade chalk paint on top. I wanna to put graphics on it and my graphics adhere better to a chalk painted surface. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. I'm gonna turn this into a cell phone charging area and I've printed off my graphics on regular computer paper, reverse the text. This graphic is available in my Etsy store. If you find these out thrifting and you wanna make one for yourself, I'm gonna put the charging station up here and one and two here, and it's gonna keep your cell phones nice and neat and tidy, and you can plug it in. So I'll show you how I'm gonna finish it up. I got my graphics all cut out. I'm gonna be using my Mod Podge mat, and I'm just gonna put a real light coat of the Mod Podge over the graphics and then center them exactly where I want them. Make sure there's no wrinkles and bubbles. And then I'm gonna set it aside until tomorrow and then we'll rub off the paper and we'll finish this up. Okay, it's the next day and this is completely dry. I've just got a sponge with a little bit of water on it. I'm just gonna lightly dampen that and rub off these graphics. I'm really excited for this project because I always see these little mail holders, uh, mail organizers at the thrift store and I think this is going to work out perfect. I'm saving this one for myself. It's going to go in my kitchen and I'm going to be charging my cell phones in it. I have this all done and I'm gonna drill some holes in the sides 
to fit through my chargers. Now I have a type C charger and an iPhone charger. So you wanna make sure that you're picking out a drill bit that's gonna be big enough for those chargers to go through. And this one's gonna work perfect. Now, because this is gonna have lots of fingers coming in and out, I wanna seal it really well so I can wipe it down with a damp rag if I want to. I'm gonna use my engine enamel. This gives it a really durable coating. I'm gonna take it out to my shed and give it a really good coat all over the whole project. Now I've got the holes all done and you can see, putting the smaller end in through there. And this is my type C, it fits right through there. And now you can mount it on your wall and charge your cell phones and it looks pretty. I love this DIY. I think that it just kind of takes a messy looking charging area and makes it nice and pretty and you can just set your cell phone in there and plug these ends into your wall outlet and you're all set. So keep your eye out for these letter and bill holders and give this DIY a try. Okay, that's a wrap. My shed is starting to slowly have less and less projects in it, which always feels good. Let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.